Welcome back to Casual Retro Gamer. This week we have two dead Commodore 64 boards in the cave. Let's see if we can get one of these to work. Okay, so here's our two boards. The top one here, which is complete, is from 1983 and it's an assembly number 250407. The bottom one here that's missing a few bits and pieces from 1984 is a 250425. Both of these boards have had a certain amount of work in the past. As we can see here, there's been some stuff done around here, around the serial and the AV connector. A bit of work done here, here, here. In fact, there is a broken pin there. Oh, well, sorry. What I should say is the pin is there, but the pod has been completely ripped off. And that's on the PLA. This board though has unfortunately suffered a catastrophic over voltage. And I think the vast majority of the RAM chips on here and possibly some of the other chips are completely fried as a result of it. The 5 volt reel on the 64 comes direct from the power supply. It's not through this. Uh, 7805 voltage regulator that just supplies power to the VIC um, and I think it was 15 volts or something was run through this board so yeah it has probably killed quite a bit of it if you power this board up nearly all the RAM actually all the RAM chips all eight of them get incredibly hot way hotter than they should which is a sign that they're dead the SID gets worn, but you would expect that. So does the PLA, you would expect that. The CPU stays ice cold. The ROM chips are cold as well. So this board, while it's complete, is not the one we're going to try and fix. We're gonna try and get this one up and running. Now, this board has had a little bit of rework here. As you can see around this, Someone has scratched off quite a bit of the solder mask in here. So, and I can see where I think a couple of traces have been repaired. What we will do is remove this socket, just to inspect this a little better. On the back side though, things are not as pretty. There's these two patch wires here. I don't think they are going to be uh, from the factory because they're on where the work has been done so you can see there's been work here over here at the CIA's uh, at the PLA chip has had work what's this one here the 74 LS258 has had work done to it uh, various bits and pieces right around the board so, first thing we're going to do is clean all this up. Trying, there's a lot of uh, flux on this. We're going to clean all that up and get all that off. Then we'll start inspecting the work that has been done on this. I'm just noticing here actually that the socket for the VIC and the socket for the SID are those really crap sockets that only have the contacts on one side. So what we'll probably do is just remove those two. I have a couple of spare sockets lying so We'll pull them out and fit some better sockets in there. This socket here that somebody's obviously put on, it looks a bit rough. Um, we're going to take this off anyway. We'll see what state it's in when we get in there. Right, first things first, I'm going to try and clean this board a bit. So I've just been cleaning the board here with our toothbrush and our IPA. One thing though I just wanted to show you quickly. Whoever did the work on this before has left quite a bit of uh, stray solder, as I would call it. Little loose flakes of solder just lying around the board. Hopefully they have not caused a short in the past. I haven't tried to power this board on yet. Hopefully they haven't caused any shorts. If they have, there's potential that other things are damaged as well. The likes there, maybe you can see it just on the far side of those pins where my finger is. 
there's quite a bit of solder in there and this is even after I have given it one go over with the toothbrush so we need to get all that off I'll continue cleaning up and then uh, we'll be back I have this board cleaned as well as I can do it for now anyway if we do get this up and running I'll come back to it and maybe give it another quick going over next thing I want to do is just check some of the work that's been done on this before we'll start with these two patch wires here just to make sure they're in the correct location so this one here is running from the CPU that is pin pin 12 on the CPU so let's just refer to the schematic to see what that is doing so pin 12 on the CPU is address line 5 and that is running down to this chip here which is U26 and it's running the pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so pin 5 of U26 let's go back to the schematic again here's U26 here pin 5 let's follow this down it's going to address line 5 so that's correct this is correct let's just track this one as well so this is the PLA chip here uh, this is connected to pin what's that pin 13 of the PLA so let's have a look here pin 13 is here and let's follow that and that should be connected to pin 10 of U6 so this is U6 here this one with the dodgy socket and all the work around it And that's supposed to be connected to pin 10 that's right so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so again that patch wire is correct could maybe be a wee bit shorter though right next thing I'm going to do is just go around with the multimeter on continuity and I want to have a wee check at uh, some of this work up here when I was cleaning it became more apparent that unfortunately several of the pods have been ripped off here in the past for example there's one there there those those three look dodgy that one doesn't look good there there's that one a couple there look like they've been removed yeah someone obviously went a wee bit heavy handed when they were working on this before the solder on here is a bit of a state as well so I think I will just reflow this but first of all I want to check for continuity everywhere so I'll do that and then we'll be back I think I have this more or less sorted out now practically every pod around here this whole area has been ripped off by whoever tried to repair this before it just makes our repair all the more difficult every single one of them down here is missing the trace at this point had been effectively just ripped in two when this pod came off so I've put a wee jumper in there it was just a bit of a leg of a resistor that'll do for now and then just push that pin back onto it and solder it up likewise here where this is missing 
there's no continuity at all between here and this point here it was joined on the other side previously so i've just run a wee jumper in again using a bit of leg of, of the resistor but it's uh lifted off the board slightly so to not short anything out pod missing here as you can see that's still floating the leg of that that socket so I've just had to make this wee jumper here to get continuity back. Several of these other ones here where the pads are missing. There still is some of the via in there. And I float as much solder into it as I can. It is uh, making, well, it's making continuity okay according to the multimeter for where it needs to go around the board. We're going to test it, see what happens. Possible still a weak area in, in this board here at the minute. But uh, we'll come back to that later if we're still having issues. Next thing to do though, before we jump in and start putting chips in these sockets. I want to put power through this board. And we're going to go and check that we just have our 5 and 12 volts. Where we would expect to see it. The board's hooked up, we've got power to it from our old power brick through our C64 saver here. Green light, we're still good to go. Let's uh, fire this thing up, get power through it. That's how we poke around for voltages. So we'll check the two voltage regulators first. So the 7805. It's giving us 4.94, which is dead on. And the 7812, it's giving us 12.19, which is, that's all right. Right, around the board though, are we getting five volts? So 4.91 down here. That's fine. We have, 4.91 here as well on this 5 volt. This is the PLA on this board. I know most C64s would have the SID in this location. That's the SID here on this revision. This one's the PLA. And there is our 4.91 again. On the SID, this should be 12 volt up here. Yep. And then that one's 5. Yep. That's fine. Okay. I'm pretty happy that we're getting power around the board. What about down here where things are quite badly damaged? Which one's? That one's our 4.91, that's okay. Likewise there. Yeah. Right, next thing to do is to start putting the chips in. And then we will power it on. All we need to put in is the VIC, the PLA and the colour RAM. We don't need the SID. We don't need the other CIA. We'll not put this in for now, the character ROM. If it does, by any miracle, post, we will uh, just get a blank screen, just a blank blue screen. but. We'll do that first, get the VIC, the PLA, this RAM in, and uh, let's see what happens. Well, we'll do that in four minutes anyway, because I'm trying to win myself a C64C at the minute on eBay. I don't have one of these. Currently have a £30 bid on it. This one is faulty, gives a black screen. I don't really want to go much more than 30 quid, but... Let's see how high this actually does wind up. So we're down the TV end of the cave right now. I was going to hook up the 64 using my SCART cable, but for whatever reason that has uh, thrown a bit of a wobbly and does not want to, to display on the TV. So we are unfortunately going to have to resort to RF. So I've hooked up my main 64 here, just to show you how bad this signal is. 
that's what we're getting. I'll have to get myself a new uh, skirt cable. This is the board we've been working on. So we have taken a few of the chips here out of the other C64 board that I think is probably fried. So I don't even know if these other chips are going to work. We have taken out the video memory. We have taken out the PLA and the VIC. Hopefully the VIC is okay and the PLA. That can be quite hard to come by. Um, so we don't have the character ROM fitted. So if this posts, all I would expect to see is just blue and blue. There'll be no text. There might actually be just a scattering of uh, randomness on the screen without the character ROM. But that's what we would expect to see. Right, let's uh, get this board hooked up and see what happens. Here we go, moment of truth. Are we going to get a video signal? We're not getting anything. Oh, here we go. Hey, this is starting to look promising. So we're getting a video signal, that is good. We're getting our light display, or sorry, our light border on the display. The darker center, but as you can see, it is full of garbage. The next thing we need to do is get this character ROM in. Let's do that. Let's see if we get anything different happening on the screen. So this is our character ROM here. Again, this is pulled from the other C64 board that is fried. That's in place. Let's see what happens. That is looking pretty damn good to me. We have a working board, do we? We'll have to get the, the other CIA in. We'll have to get the SID in. We'll connect up a keyboard. And then we'll try and load something. Hopefully, this is going to work. So here we are then. We have the SID in place, albeit I had to change that socket. This chip just did not want to go into the other socket, no matter what I did. We have the second CIA in place. I have hooked up our SD to IEC, so we can try and load something. And I've robbed the keyboard of my main 64, just to plug it in here. I do have another case and spare keyboard, but it needs a complete refurb. Uh, very little of the keys on it work. In fact, on this keyboard, the only key that gives trouble is the N key. And the only thing I ever have to type on this is run. Let's see though if we can get it to work. So we are powered up again, even with the hideous looking display. So let's see if this is going to work. Yep, it has loaded.
or the tribe of Donkey Kong, really. So I'm not 100% sure that looks right with the lines in it. You don't seem to be getting any sound, but again, that could be down to the horrible RF connection that I've been forced to use here. Yeah, that's not looking good. So, definitely some other issues on this board, I think. Possibly ROM issues. Now there's absolutely no sound whatsoever. Well, we have it partly working. I mean, it is getting there. I do have a dead test cart and the complete harness for testing this thing coming in the post. So what we'll maybe do is we'll just call the day with this video for now. And then we'll come back to this in a couple of weeks when I get the harness. To see if we can figure out what else is going wrong on this board. I mean, so it's running the game okay. It's running code okay. There's no issue from that point of view. Colors just don't look right either, should they not? Right, anyway, that'll do for this video. If you enjoyed what you've seen, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Why not consider subscribing so you don't miss the next part of this. And uh, I'll see you soon.